When I was a little girl, I liked to make up skits and plays. And I would convince my cousins and the kids on, in my block to put on shows. We would practice for hours and hours. And of course, I usually wanted to be the director. But I grew up in this predominantly white suburban community in California, and I got this idea of what a leader is. I thought leaders are strong, they're determined, they're organized, and they're decisive. They set goals and then they direct other people to achieve those goals. And that is often true. But then I encountered another leadership model, an indigenous model that continues to challenge my assumptions about what it takes to lead. For the past 10 years, I've had the honor to serve as the executive director of One Equal Heart Foundation, a nonprofit based in Seattle, Washington. One Equal Heart collaborates with indigenous leaders in Chiapas, Mexico, to honor and to nurture sustainable agriculture, equitable communities, and traditional knowledge. From the beginning, we wanted to be the kind of global development organization that worked to improve the well-being of communities through projects that reflected their priorities and their vision, not ours. Chiapas is Mexico's most biologically diverse state and its most economically impoverished. It's also culturally rich. We work with the Saltal Maya, one of about 30 Maya peoples who are native to southern Mexico and Guatemala. Saltal comes from two words in the native language, for joy and to arrive with. So we can say that the Saltal people are the people who arrive with joy. Like many of the Maya cultures throughout this region, the Celtales have a very organized system of community service. Hundreds and hundreds of people serve their communities in a variety of capacities, from organizing the annual feast to serving as health promoters and agroecologists or conflict mediators. Every single one does their service voluntarily without any compensation. They often have to walk hours to fulfill their duties or to attend a meeting. And every single one has a full-time job. They all grow their own food by hand without any machinery. So after seeing these leaders over the years, I started getting curious. What do Seltal communities look for in their leaders? And what kind of person becomes a leader? Rosalina, a Seltal woman, became my teacher. Rosalina works for the Center for Indigenous Rights, which is one of our sister organizations in Chiapas. She said that Seltal communities look for three things in their leaders. The first thing is that leaders wait to be invited. Now, community service in Seltal communities is voluntary, but no one volunteers. Rosalina said that if people, they get concerned about people who nominate themselves to be leaders. She told me, people who strive for leadership are ambitious, and we think they lack the humility to serve. What we're looking for are people who are able to put aside their individual interests in favor of the, enti the good of the entire community. So people wait to be invited, and from what I understand, most individuals wait to be invited at least three times before they say yes. Once they finally agree to assume a leadership position, the whole community stands behind them. They get assigned a older brother or older sister leader that serves as a mentor, and also a community elder or two to serve as a spiritual and ethical guide. So we can say that behind every cell tall leader, there's both a team and a community. And what I've observed about this is that the most assertive people in the community aren't automatically its leaders. And so we have a much more diverse pool of people 
who can serve as leaders. Take, for example, Dora. She's the woman on the left. I met Dora just about a, a little over a year ago. She told me that growing up in her community, she just assumed as a woman she had nothing to, of value to contribute. She said, my idea was that women were only good for cooking and taking care of kids. Then one day there was a community assembly in Dora's village, and she went. Three leaders, two men and a woman, who served their communities as what are called caretakers of Mother Earth, came to say that they would be offering a course in ecological farming. Dora's first thought was, well, only men will be invited to that. But the woman caretaker of the earth said to the assembled people, just like an ecosystem requires all of its parts to work together, agroecology only works when the entire community participates, both men and women. With this, Dora felt this incredible surge of enthusiasm and energy. She was really, really interested. But she held back. And instead, what her community did is they saw that enthusiasm and they encouraged her to enroll. She told me, once I started classes, I felt something inside me grow. And I realized I do have something I can contribute. Now I'm learning to serve my community and I hope one day they will invite me to be a caretaker of the earth. Dora would have never volunteered. She couldn't imagine herself as a leader, but her community saw something in her and invited her to serve. Now Dora is discovering her own abilities and her community benefits from that contribution. The second thing Rosalina told me is that leaders listen more than they speak. So for those of you out there who know me, you know that this would automatically disqualify me for leadership in Chiapas. <laughs> but Rosalina said that in the, the Maya culture, dialogue is really important. And we all know that dialogue requires listening. What she's told me is that all important community decisions in Mayan communities are made through the community assembly, where everyone has the opportunity to speak for as long as they wish about whatever issue is facing the community. And these assemblies can go on for hours and hours and sometimes days as people debate and discuss. And meanwhile, all the leaders of the community say nothing. They simply listen. They don't try to win an argument or advance their personal opinion. They simply listen. And Rosalina told me that when our leaders listen they, to all of our voices, they get a bigger picture of whatever problem we're facing. And after people have spoken, what these leaders do, they say, thank you. We have harvested the word of our community. And in that word, there is wisdom. Then what happens is the leaders began to reflect back to the community what they've heard. By listening and reflecting, the leaders help create a creative space so that communities can arrive to their, at their own solutions, not those imposed by leaders, but ones that come from the community. The third and final requirement for good leadership is one that Rosalina said is the most important. Leaders walk slowly. Now, when she told me this, I have to say I was completely stumped. What does walking slowly have to do with leadership? But she explained, she said that leaders are not beholden to the everyday hustle and bustle, to the calendar, to the agenda, to the next thing that they have to go to. Leaders walk slowly because they're connected to deep time, to time beyond time. She said they're not thinking about tomorrow, next week, next month, or even next year. They're thinking about the next generation. Rosalina said, our leaders walk slowly because they can think with the wisdom of their hearts, not their heads. These leaders and this leadership model is what has inspired One Equal Heart since our beginning. We have spent the last 10 years supporting programs that really are aimed at forming <coughs> leaders through training and community education. But in preparing for this, I realize something, that all the while we've been focused on preparing CELTAL leaders, 
They've been gently and persistently forming us. How? Cell tall leaders invite us into relationship. We go out to communities and we never get right down to business. We are always invited into relationship. We sit down for a community meal. We go visit elders in their homes. We participate in rituals, in funerals and fiestas. Cell tall leaders continually remind us that it's important to make time and space to create relationships of trust because that's the only way we can have effective collaboration. Cell tall leaders ask us to listen. When we go out on a community monitoring or assessment visit for one of our programs, leaders always allocate time for us to sit down and listen to the community. The community offers their perspectives on our program. They even tell us what they think about us as an international global development organization. And they share with us their vision of what well-being looks like for them. What does development look like for them? Cell tall leaders know that it is important to allocate this kind of time because we need to see the bigger picture. When we listen to their voices, we can begin to understand how our program fits into their broader vision for development. Finally, cell tall leaders ask us to walk slowly. So again, if you knew me, you would know I always have a big list, a running list of things I need to do. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm very much a, a person uh, that I like goals, and I like to cross off that list of goals. So I come to Chiapas with an arm load of lists. But when I go out to the communities, they do not respond to my rush to, to accomplish. Cell tall leaders slow things way down. And in that process, what we do is we find that we make deeper connections and deeper insights. And that can only be good for a global development organization like us. And I can tell you that every time I leave a community, I leave with such a deep sense of peace. I know that's right. So I'm looking out into this audience and I'm seeing a ton of leaders and future leaders. I can feel the collective weight of so many course credits and capstone projects and papers read and written and I'm sure all of you could pull out your iPhone or your day planner and show me long lists of things that you're going to do both here and also outside the university. So I want to just ask you if you would join me in considering Rosalina's invitation to us all to slow down, to connect to that time beyond time. Maybe we could start with three times a week of just purposefully, deliberately slowing down our lives and then paying attention. Do we notice things that we didn't notice before? Do deeper questions come to mind? Does the long view come into focus? Because just as Rosalina said, when we slow down and walk slowly, we can think with the wisdom of our hearts. The results just might surprise us. Thank you.